Good afternoon and welcome to one and all. I'm with the point of Conflernet. It is a good session assistant for a senior section in US. Conflernet is India's most trusted and widely utilized platform with multiple interesting services exclusively for doctors. Conflernet is very proud to be its partner for this event named Comparison of Two Means Independent and Care, organized by the Pinot All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Patna. So, without wasting any further minute, let's begin to this session for which I would like to invite Dr. Venkatesh Kartikin, the General Secretary of Indian Medical Association, Junior Doctors Network, Tamil Nadu, to take over. Over to you, sir. Please proceed. A very good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the third webinar on the series Data Analytics Made Easy with Jamovi Software, hosted by the Department of Community and Family Medicine, Ames Patna, in collaboration with Merit India and Clarinet. Myself, Dr. Venkatesh Karthikeyam, Community and Family Medicine PG resident from Ames Patna, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. I'm thrilled to see such a fantastic response for this webinar. We have more than uh, 2,000 participants who have registered from different corners of the country, and hopefully they'll be joining in the next few minutes. As we all know, data analytics has become an increasingly important tool in the healthcare industry, allowing doctors to analyze and interpret vast amounts of data to make informed decisions and improve the patient outcomes. This webinar series is aimed to prove, uh, provide insights into data analytics and its application in healthcare. I would like to thank our HOD, Professor Dr. CM Singh, sir, and Dr. Samshad Ahmad, sir, the Associate Professor of Department of Community and Family Medicine, Ames Patna, without whose support, this webinar series would not have been possible. Now, I'd like to welcome Dr. Pragya Kumar, ma'am, Additional Professor, Department of Community and Family Medicine, and the Registrar of Ames Patna. Ma'am has over 50 research publications to her credit and has trained over 5,000 researchers across the globe th through her workshops and webinar. With this short introduction, I'd like to welcome Pragya, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Venkatesh. Uh, so we will start this session. And uh, maybe the uh, people who are joining for the first time, you may find a little uh, difficulty in handling the software, but slowly we will learn how to do this because the this Jamovi interface is very user-friendly. Uh, so uh, we we assume and we have a belief that uh, those of you who are a first time joiner also they will perform all the tests which you missed in the first two sessions so the, today's session is about the data analysis uh, where we will be learning if there are two means how we can compare those two means and if it is uh, non parametric then how we can compare the two medians so this whole session has been divided into five parts. Firstly, we will be discussing regarding the basic concepts, then the research questions, because understanding the research question is the crux of applying the analytical part. And then the third is there are certain assumptions and hypotheses which you have to fulfill before you apply a certain tests. So we will learn that and then we will see what are the commands and how do we interpret the output or the result in Jamovi? And then again, I'll show you the, uh, summarize all the commands at the last. Uh, the data set has been posted in the group. And those of you who want to practice along with us, you can download the data sheet and uh, you can download Jamovi also. So you can just type on Google Jamovi and uh, then it will lead to an interface of Jamovi. And then depending on your system, whether it is a PC or a Mac, you can download the Jamovi. It will take hardly one minute to 90 seconds. And it's recommended that you download the solid version. And then you can practice that data set along with us, the way I am showing, and then you can do it simultaneously. That will have a good outcome because then after the end of this 90 minute session, you will be able to perform all these tests along with the interpretation. So uh, first we will learn about the one sample t-test. Although this one sample t-test here, I'm comparing a, my sample mean along with the, in comparison to a reference mean. Then we will learn independent sample t-test where we compare two means then we will learn man with me u test which is the non parametric counterpart of the independent sample t test then we'll see about the paired sample t test where we are comparing paired observations 
And then we'll see regarding the Wilcoxon signed rank test, which is the non-parametric counterpart of the paired sample t-test. Before we start our session, let's understand the concept of variance here. Because in independent sample t-test, there is one assumption which you need to understand before you apply that test. So we should understand the concept of variance. So statistically, if you see variance is just the standard deviation square. But how to understand it pragmatically, that we'll see. So in this picture, you can see there are two uh, set of sample. Towards the left side, this side, you can see, if I like focus. So this is a one uh, set of two people. And towards the right side also, you can see there is a one sample where two people are there. So we have withdrawn these two individuals from the population A and we have withdrawn these two individuals from population B. I have measured the height towards the, this one and then the height of this person is 140 centimeter and height of this person is 120 centimeter. So if I calculate the average, what is the average of this sample? Although we don't never take two sample as our study purpose, but just to make you understand the concept of variance and to simplify the concept of variance, we have just taken two individual as our sample size. So the average would be 120 plus 140 divided by two, it will be 130. Now coming to this second scenario, where I have drawn two sample from population B, here the height of both the individual is 130. So the average is 130. So can you say, because if you just see the mean of these two population, so mean is same, mean in the uh, scenario 1 is 130 and the mean in scenario 2 is also 130. But can you say that uh, uh, the variance in height in both the group is equal? Yes, please type in the chat box. Based on this, can you say that the variance of height is equal in both the population? So variance, like those of you who do, uh, are new, variance, you can understand something as a variability. Means uh, uh, it's a quality or a, a trait which keeps varying from one person to another person. And variance is basically how the individual value is, how far it is from the group mean. That's how we describe the variance. So I cannot see the, uh, probably the chat box, so I cannot see the responses. Can you? Uh, team Clarinet, can you please check on it? Okay. As the okay. chat, chat box being yeah. oh, yeah. Ellen John is writing, it's disabled. Chat disabled. So uh, because, uh, can you, uh, can the Clarinet, Clarinet team enable this chat? Because then otherwise uh, I won't, we won't understand whether the participants are getting or not. Should I wait, Venkatesh? For uh, Rituparna, are you available? You can call her probably. I'll call her. Yes, yeah. So, okay, in the meantime, we will continue with the session. Otherwise, uh, all the portion will not be completed. And uh, Venkatesh, you can intervene in between and just inform us whether the ch chat has been enabled or not. So that okay, I okay. then uh, accordingly, I'll ask questions. Otherwise, if the chat is not enabled, there's no point asking the questions. Okay. So uh, I uh, let's see, I am uh, only concluding right now because I don't know uh, what uh, about your end. So we cannot say that the variance is same in both the population. Definitely the variance will be different. And uh, if I know, uh, if I just ask this question, what is the population variance? Then yes, in case it, it is, uh, you can see variance I have described. This was the uh, first slide and this was regarding the second. So the mean was 130. So how I have, uh, taken out the variance. So basically variance is also known as the sum of square divided by the sample size minus one. That SSS, sum of square, remember. So in this case, you can see the mean value was 130. So difference from mean in case of this person, it is 10. 
and then in case of this person, this uh, green uh, T-shirt, it is minus ten. I think we should have written the name so that I I I would have uh, called out the name of these two people, but just uh, I'm just calling out with the color of the shirt. And then towards the right side, you can see the variance will be difference from the mean would be zero because mean is one thirty and individual value is also one thirty. Uh, so if I have to calculate the variance, it will be sum of square. So I'll uh, do that minus 10 square plus 10 square. So the variance of population uh, A will be 100, whereas in population B, the variance would be zero because you can see the both uh, individual differences are zero. That's why overall variance will be zero. So for height, we can easily see the variance because we can see the height externally. Like if, uh, if there are 10 individuals, we can, without even measuring, we can say that, yeah, there is a variation in this group. But if we are going to measure some biological parameter, like let's say systolic blood pressure or a blood uh, BMI, maybe the TSH or any other variable like creatinine, there are so many parameters. But that thing cannot be said uh, externally. And if there are many values, you need a calculator or you need a statistical software to tell you about the variances in the population. So again, there's a, one more example here. You can see there are two data set here. There's a data set A and second is the data set B. So this data set A, the TSH, and this is, uh, there are two columns. In first column, there's a gender where you can see male and female. So uh, I think there are three and three, six, uh, while a uh, uh, sample is there, out of that, there are three male and three female. And these are the individual TSH level. Similarly, here, this is the individual TSH level. So mean in case of the data set A is 11. And mean, case, mean in case of data set B is also 11. So mean is same. But uh, yes, uh, if you see the variation. So uh, I don't know whether the chat is enabled. Again, disabled. So if I ask you the, so Venkatesh is still the chat. Just, uh, just a minute, ma'am. Uh, we are sorting it out. Just a minute. You please continue, ma'am. Uh, I love it. Sure, you. sure. I'll continue. So you can see here, if I see the variability, the variability is definitely more in data set B because there is one person who is having a TSH level of four and there's three and then another, uh, another female who is having 18. So if we see the range or if, see, if we see the individual variation, that is more in case of data set B. So uh, if we, uh, I have to conclude about the variance, how I can uh, describe. So var variance is basically a statistics. I'm not going into that statistical formula of variance, but to understand it, uh, its applicability. So variance basically tells us regarding the spread of the values. So in a, in a sample, how the values are spread regarding its dispersion, it conveys the same meaning. And it again gives us an idea regarding how the individual value, it's, it's different or it's uh, you know, uh, from the mean value, average or mean value. So if there is a high variance, it tells us that the values are more spread out. And if there is a low variance, it indicates that the values are very closer to mean. So there are two types of variances. There is a sample variance and there is a population variance. So sample variance is the variance in a sample which you have drawn from the population. And population variance is existing in the population. So it's a measure of variability within that population. And then it calculates how much that the individual data point in a population deviate from the population mean. So in case of a population variance, you see the data point, individual data point, and how it is different from the population mean. In case of a sample variance, you are measuring the individual data point with the sample mean, like we have seen in the previous example. So you just deduct the individual mean with the sample mean, then square it and then divide it by n minus one. That will give you the sample variance. So then what is the difference between the population variance and sample variance? So the key distinction is in the denominator. So in case of a population variance, 
we take in the denominator the total population size, whereas in case of a sample variance like we talk, we take the sample size minus one. And this use of this sample size minus one in the sample variance formula that is known as the Bessel's correction. And this Bessel's correction is necessary to provide an unbiased estimate. So why we use this sample variance to estimate population variance? Because we'll see uh, in the, uh, there is an assumption which is, which is the homogeneity of variance, which we apply in case of an independent sample t-test. So uh, this uh, sample variance, we use this sample variance to estimate population variance because ultimately we, we can't uh, measure the population uh, variance. You know, we always say that we do the research because we want to uh, convey about the population parameter through sample statistics because we cannot count everyone in the population because it is not feasible. So that's why we collect sample in the random way. And that's, that's why there is a, so much importance of the sampling method. So if you, if you adopt a random sampling method, then definitely this sample variance is very much equal to the population variance. And then the generalizability of your study will be of high. So that's why we use the sample variance. Another concept is the effect size. Because in the output of Jamovi, we, uh, you will see that in the table, you see these two. Like there is an effect size also. And uh, under that section, that homogeneity of variance, you need to understand the concept of variance. Now, what is this effect size? And these days, we uh, do talk a lot about these effect sizes. So first, we'll see about few examples, and then I will summarize what is this effect size. So this uh, is, again, one data set. You can see here. Uh, This is the uh, 16 uh, individual, serial number 1 to 16. And then first, uh, let me describe the data set. And this is the gender of uh, all those 16 people. And there are two studies. There is a study A and there is a study B. So this study A has got 10 individual, but this study B has got 16 individual. And this is the... Um, hemoglobin level of 10 individual and this is the hemoglobin level of 16 individual. So suppose if I want to compare the mean hemoglobin level across gender in study A and in study B, then what should I do? So basically, you will see here that uh, if you see the result in this case, this is the output of independent sample t-test of this study A and a study B hemoglobin level. If I see the values, so you see the p-value. P, uh, uh, so, okay, so now it is enabled, so I can ask questions. So in this case, if I ask you regarding the p-value, which p-value is uh, uh, like uh, whether both uh, these are significant or not significant. So this I am comparing the mean hemoglobin across gender, okay? So you just see that this is the uh, difference of the mean hemoglobin. This is three. This is actually this uh, column is showing the mean difference and this column is showing the p-value. So if you, you see the p-value, there's a p-value, uh, this and the other one. And now you see the mean difference. So if you see the mean difference in which uh, study, the mean difference between male and female is more. Yes, all of you, please type in the chat box. Uh, can I see the responses? I don't know whether that option is available to us as a panelist. Okay. No. So I'll move forward because I cannot see the chat. Uh, both seems to be okay. Reena Mohan has written both seems to be significant yes that's that's right but uh, reena can you see the mean difference uh, and uh, divya pallavi asar uh, As asar is also writing nidhi nidhi right now it is chat is enabled you can type now so if you see the mean difference actually the mean difference is more in case of study a 
but on the basis of mean difference you cannot say uh, regarding the uh, the value of the study so if you see there is another column which uh, mentions about the effect size so this says that effect size is 1.59 for study a and study b says regarding the effect size of 1.92 so then can you say that which study has got more applicability because if you see the difference you may conclude that you will go with the study a because it is saying that the mean difference is 3 but again we don't see and again if you see the p value the p value is more in case of a study b although both are significant so which uh which study you will apply as as a part of your practice or as a part of your evidence based practice so basically you will take study b because the effect size of study b it is more and the effect size uh, you can see here it's the cohen's d and we learn what are the different types of this effect sizes measure of these effect sizes so this 1.59 is the effect size of study a and this 1.92 is the effect size of study b so larger the effect size uh, the more uh, evidence that particular study generates again in this case you can see this is a uh, pair data so these are the 10 individual and this column 1 represents the crp measurement of crp at day 0 the second column it tells you regarding the measurement of crp at day 14 third column it tells you regarding the measurement of creatinine at day 0 and this fourth column tells you regarding the measurement of creatinine at day 15 so you can see there are two variables here crp and creatinine and we have measured these two variable twice at the time of admission and at day 14 and if i want to know the like if it's uh, i have given some drug and they are the covid cases and i want to see whether the reduction in crp or creatinine so which is showing the more reduction so if you see the mean value uh, this is the p value so p value is significant in both the case and but if you see the significant difference then you can see it's the the uh, mean difference is 70 and uh, 2.44 so can you say that uh, since the crp is uh, difference what what will be your interpretation on this mean difference which is uh, which is has got more applicability which has got more practical applicability in this case uh, yes let me uh, see So creatinine. Okay. There is a particular noise. So there is some noise is coming. Maybe some participants. Okay. So yes, creatinine. You are right. But what is the basis of your answer? Uh, regarding that creatinine, I can. And I I I saw uh, some person. Okay. Dumpala is writing. Not able to chat. okay uh, doctor effect size agree true right answer so it learned team can see i why why few people cannot post their responses kindly see to this matter so yes you are right that effect size since it is more in case of uh, the uh, creatinine because it is 1.88 so we will uh, say say that the, it has got more practical applicability so what is a effect size so basically it measures uh, the magnitude or strength of a relationship or difference between the variables so if you see the formula i'm not going into the formula of effect size but you have to see like how large the difference is observed in real world that means the practical significance and many of us also call it as a clinical applicability and we always cite this example uh, clinical significance or practical significance versus the statistical significance because this effect size is independent of sample size this statistical significance if you increase the data to a larger extent definitely all the result will be significant but uh, this uh, effect size it will not be significant uh, it is not affected by the sample size that's why we should report this uh, effect size along with the p value and we always encourage that you and jamovi gives a 
output. You just have to click the effect size and it gives you the output. So, so you have to just interpret it basically. So the commonly used effect size are the Cohen's D. Then there are other Cohen's. We will use this uh, Cohen's D because Jamovi gives this Cohen's D as an option in case of an independent sample t-test. There are other measures of effect size when we'll see the ANOVA. But here, the other types of effect sizes are like hedges G, Pearson's correlation, R square. Again, this odds ratio relative risk is also a type of effect size. And hazard ratio, number needed to treat. These are the effect, various measures of effect size. But in today's session, we'll see this Cohen's D. So p-value, if we want to see the p-value versus effect size, so p-value gets affected by the large sample sizes that we have discussed, that if you increase the sample size by three or four times, definitely your non-significant result will also become significant. That means your p-value will be less than 0 0.05. But that's not the case with the effect size. Effect size is not affected by the sample size. That's why you should report the effect size. Now, uh, these were the two basic concepts which we wanted to cover before we start the uh, comparison of two means. So, uh, first, uh, we will demonstrate the one sample t-test. So, uh, let's understand the few basic concepts of this one sample t-test. So, basically, it is known as the one sample t-test because there is only one group here. And uh, but, but then you will say, then, ma'am, how can we compare two groups? Because you said in the beginning, that we are comparing the mean of two groups, but here there is only one group. So basically in this case, I compare the sample mean against some known value and known value could be there with me already, like maybe through NFHS data or through survey, some other survey data or through some hospital records. So that data I have already. So basically in one sample t-test, we compare the mean value of a continuous or a scale variable with a known or a hypothesized value. So the research question is, is this, uh, if uh, my research question is, is a new teaching method can improve the mean marks obtained as compared to the institute mean marks? Means if I, I have got a mean marks of all the uh, students uh, as a, uh, with the, the CEO, which is the controller of examination. Any problem with the voice? Okay. Is it okay now? Okay. So uh, if my research question is, is this new teaching method can improve the mean marks obtained as compared to the institute mean marks? So I have got the reference as an institute mean marks. The second research question could be, is the hemoglobin value of a sample population being same as the national average? So I have got a national average, maybe through NFHS data of a mean hemoglobin level. And I have taken a sample and I just want to see how my sample is differing from the national average in, in context of mean. Then the third research question could be, is there any difference in the mean depression score between the sample and the population? So in all these three research questions, what can you see? So you have seen that there is a scale variable and the scale variable is also known as the continuous variable. And we want to compare it to a population average, which is either known or the hypothesized. So the appropriate statistical test for such type of research questions are the one sample t-test. And this one sample t-test is, uh, in this case, we are checking that is there any difference in the average score of a scale variable as compared to a known or a hypothesized population value. It is also known as the single parameter t-test or one sample t-test. And these are the other names like single sample t-test, single parameter t-test, one sample t-test. So all these are same. So we have in the beginning, uh, we discussed uh, like uh, before we apply any test, we have to check the assumptions because that applicability of a test or the interpretation will be uh, useful only if we fulfill the assumptions. So there are some underlying assumptions of this independent sample t-test. And the first assumption is that there should be one dependent variable and the dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale. The second assumption is the variable should be approximately normally distributed. And the third variable is there should be no significant outlier. And in case of Jamovi, you can check these assumptions uh, in the same uh, view. We will see that. 
So now coming to the concept of outlier. So how do we uh, know whether a particular data point is an out behaving as an outlier or not? So that we do with the help of a box plot. So we draw the box plot, we click that and a data point that is more than 1.5 box length from the edge of their box are classified by the software as outlier and they are shown by dot. And now there is something known as extreme outlier. So data point which are more than three box length away from the edge of their box, they are classified as the extreme data point and they are known as the extreme outlier and they are represented as asterisks. So in this case, you can see that this is represented by a dot. So this is a normal outlier. But this 173 case number and that number which you can see over that point, those are the serial number of your case. Those are not the values. So they are the serial numbers. So that is uh, the extreme outlier. Now coming to what is the hypothesis. So hypothesis for this is basically that the null hypothesis is population mean is equal to the sample mean. And in the second, uh, this uh, null uh, alternate hypothesis says that population mean, which is estimated from a sample mean, it is not equal to the known population. So I will first demonstrate this before we move to the so this is the data set of Jamovi and uh, this is the uh, question. So if I see the question, you can see that I have to do, I have, I want to study whether the mean systolic blood pressure of my sample population is different from population mean. And I have got two values. So I have to compare it with my district where the mean SBP of my district is 120. And I have to compare with it uh, the state where, where the mean SBP of my state is 140. So again, I'll go to the data set and I'll explain the data set first because I always forget to explain the data set and then uh, you people are in confusion. What am I doing? So basically you can see here, if I show you the variable, those of you who are new to Jamovi, I'll, I'll just show you. You can see here there, there is a variable section. So this section towards the left section, you can see. Uh, okay, so let me delete this because uh, I've, I've selected all these and then I will remove all this analysis. So once you open this demo, we your interface is like this. So those of you who are uh, seeing this demo for the first time, in the demo V, you have got both the data and the output in the single window on the same view. You can see this is towards the left side. So this is uh, regarding the data set and this is the right side. Uh, this is the data uh, output. So in uh, here, whenever I'll apply the command, you can see the output here in this result section. And this is the variable. These are the various variable. You can see the name, gender, age, SES is for the socioeconomic status. If you double click this variable, you can see this uh, appears here and these are the various levels. So you can see our earlier uh, recording of the webinar to be more comfortable with the Jamovi interface. And uh, then I will go to this. Uh, these are the data set you can see here. Uh, this is HTN is hypertension and this diabetes mellitus coming to again. Then you can see the sign, this three flower sign is for the categorical variable. So this variable, the type of variable is uh, uh, very important. Because then again, your analysis might be different if you don't choose a correct variable type. If you double click this, you can see here, there is a measure type where it's continuous, ordinal and nominal. So you have to select the correct variable, otherwise you will not get a perfect result. So these are the BMI score, since all these are continuous data, like BMI score, the systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, pulse rate, respiratory rate. Here you can see respiratory rate is uh, like a categorical, but I have to change it. So these are uh, the variables of uh, this data set and total sample, if I see, we'll see it's approximately 180. So that is a sample. So coming to the, uh, this is the analysis uh, window uh, tab. So th this is a tab for variable. Then you can see there's a tab for data. And then you can see this is the analysis tab. And in analysis, once you click that, 
you can see there are various options like exploration, T test, ANOVA. So we have done in the first session on this exploration. And then we learned regarding these frequencies where we have learned the chi-square, the various types of chi-square. That was the second webinar. And in this webinar, we are uh, focusing on this uh, T-test. So if you click this T-test, you can see there are three options. One sample T-test, paired sample T-test, and independent sample T-test. So if I click on this one sample T-test, here you can see it asks you, then you can see uh, there are uh, these are the options. This is the option. So uh, I will focus more towards on the left side right now. So I have to move uh, because the systolic BP. So I will move this SVP in the dependent variable. And then uh, you can see here the various options. So this is the student t-test and this is the Wilcoxon rank. So if your data is not normally distributed, instead of student one sample, you will click on this Wilcoxon. And then this is the additional statistics. That means this gives you the mean difference, mean difference from the population or the reference value. This is for the effect size. This is the descriptive and this is the descriptive plot. And we check that before we go for this one sample t-test, we have to check with the normality, whether I should apply this student t-test or the Wilcoxon that I'll check with this normality test and the QQ plot. So again, coming uh, down, you can see here, uh, we will see these values also, depending on the type of this, you can see hypothesis, where it tells you whether it is equal, not equal to test value or more than test value or less than test value. And here you have to type the test value. So I have, uh, I have to compare it with the district, which where the value of the district SVP was, 120. So I'll have to put this as 120. This is my test value. And then I will click. Uh, so before I go, let me check the normality. So I'll click both these two options. You can see the sample size here in the descriptives. In the descriptive, the sample size is 180. So regarding this assumptions test, there are two types of assumption. Uh, this normality checking we do. There is a QQ plot and then there is a normality test. So normality test is basically a Shapiro-Wilk test and Shapiro-Wilk if, uh, if, but in case of a sample size less than uh, 50, we apply Shapiro-Wilk. But if the sample size is more than 50, we go for a QQ plot. So that's why I will uncheck this normality plot. And you can see more on these normality testing in our first webinar. There we have covered it uh, uh, in, in an elaborate manner. So you can uh, go and see that webinar. So if the sample size is more than 50, generally we plot the QQ, uh, QQ plot. And this QQ plot, you can see how do we interpret this QQ plot. So we see the individual data point. And if it is across this diagonal line, then we can say that uh, this is a normally distributed data. So since it is a normally distributed, I have done my assumption check. I can go with the, in assumption check, remember we have talked regarding the outliers also. So outlier checking you cannot do in this window. Uh, I'll show you uh, how to check that, but uh, this is a normal data. So that's why I'll go with the student. And then I will click on this mean difference on this effect size and then mean difference. You can click on this confidence interval of the mean difference also. So this is the table. The mean of this, my sample is 129. And if you see the, uh, let me go and check, yes. So this was the T statistics is this, and this is the mean difference. That means uh, my, if you see the descriptive, my mean is 129, my sample mean. And the test value I have put 120. So the difference from the test is 9.56. That's why this mean difference is 9.56. And this is significant. This so I can say mic check, mic check. Yes, and you're audible. Okay, thank you. I thought maybe no, ma'am, you can continue. Okay, thank you. So this, uh, uh, we can see the statistics here. This is the T statistics. This is the degree of freedom, 179. 
and the mean difference is 9.56 and this mean difference is again like i said this is the difference from this test value because test value you have kept here as 120 and your in if you see the descriptive your descriptive is 129 your sample mean so difference from this is the 9.56 and now coming to the uh, effect size so remember we talked about the effect size so interpretation of effect size we could not talk so basically effect size cohens d we have got three values like 0 0.1 0 0.3 and 0.5 so if the effect size is, if it is still 0 0.1 we call it as a mild if it is 0 0.3 moderate and if it is 0 0.5 or more we call it as a good effect size so since it is 0.64 it is a good effect size so this is the cohens d and if you wish to uh, put the confidence interval of cohens d also then you can uh, click that and then you can see the confidence interval it is 0 0.48 to 0 0.80 so even the lower uh, part of this effect lower 95% uh, uh, also it is uh, showing a good effect size and uh, this is the mean difference so, so this is how uh, you will then how you will write the interpretation so basically you have to enter these values here this is the SBP the mean and the deviation I think this is uh, some other data because it is showing 143 ultimately it is 129 and uh, then uh, you have to show the difference and then you have to write the interpretation so basically in the interpretation you will write uh, the assumption check also that the values of systolic blood pressure was normally distributed here and uh, there was no outlier so for outlier i said that you have to go to the descriptives so you have to go to this exploration descriptive and outlier will uh, plot by the box plot. So here you have to, in the SBP, you have to enter this variable. You have to go to the plot and then there's the option of box plot. You click on this box plot and then you can see that this is the box plot. So here there are two serial number, 155 and 149, which are the normal outlier. So you can uh, include that outlier in your analysis and do the analysis. Again, if you want to remove then uh, these outlier, you can remove 155 and 149 serial number and again perform the analysis and see uh, what uh, difference it is going to make in your result section. But always keep a backup of your original data. Whatever uh, like these addition deletion you are doing, do it on a copy of your data. So you for all of you, keep a original data set with you at one place and then make a copy of the data because many times you will need to remove certain uh, values or maybe hide or you have to perform a lot of actions, but that original data set, uh, data set should not be disturbed. So I, I can write it, it here as a, my interpretation that there was a no outlier or there was two outlier. So again, if you click on this interface, this will appear. And uh, if I want to save this result, how will I do that? I'll right click that all and then I can write analysis duplicate. So if I click duplicate, all these analysis will be saved because this is a dynamic interface. Once you move this variable back to this window, everything will disappear. So that's why you should, even the descriptive, I move this back to this descriptive once, uh, this descriptive will be lost. So this is the uh, one sample t-test. Now coming to the second part of this webinar, which is the independent sample t-test. So independent sample t-test is, uh, again, if we see the basic definition, here you start uh, with the two groups. And we call it as a independent samples because the two groups are independent. And then we are calling it as a t-test because we are comparing the mean value of a continuous or a scale variable across two groups. So the, the various type of research questions where I need this independent sample t-test could be if uh, my research question is, is average BMI value of a population with history of cardiovascular disease is different from population without history of cardiovascular disease? Or if I want to compare the pain score on visual analog scale after surgical technique one versus surgical technique two, or if I want to see, uh, do medical undergraduate student who have a good quality of sleep, do they score high in exam as compared to poor quality of sleep? So in all these three research questions, what you can see, that there is a scale variable and this scale or a continuous variable, we want to see the mean 
value of this scale variable across two categories of a nominal variable and that should be two categories you can see here the two categories are the history of cvd without the history of cardiovascular disease the two categories here are the surgical technique one and surgical technique two and here the two categories are the good quality of sleep and the bad quality of sleep so i want to compare the mean value across these two so the appropriate statistical test for such type of research questions are unpaired t test which is also known as the independent sample t test or student t test or between subject t test and many people call it as a unpaired t test also because you will learn there is a p, p uh, there is a paired t test so this is just opposite of that which is the unpaired t test so there is a possibility of three research designs where we can apply this independent sample t test or the unpaired t test the first research question is if i want to see the mean difference between the two independent group like this is the data set and we have seen this earlier also where we were comparing the hemoglobin level between the gender so this is the uh, these are the population uh, i think 7 6 7 seven individuals are there and this is the cholesterol level of those individuals and if i want to compare the mean cholesterol level between male and female then i i will apply the independent sample t test the second type of research design could be if i want to see the mean difference between the you can see i can see here that the three research uh, the second type of research design would be the mean difference between the two interventions in this case you can see here there is a one intervention which is uh, there could be uh, like exercise training program and in the other intervention which is the control we have got no intervention and this is the cholesterol level of the uh, all those individuals so here it is a randomized control trial and uh, i i have just uh, did intervention in one arm and uh, no intervention in other arm and if i want to see the uh, after 6 weeks value of cholesterol then i may uh, apply this independent sample t test here and then again if i want to see the mean difference in the change score so maybe uh, in both the group intervention and control group i have got a pre intervention cholesterol level so this first column is the pre intervention cholesterol level and this second column is after that intervention or without control maybe 6 weeks this is the second so there will be a difference like difference from the baseline so if baseline is 180 there is a reduction of 24 so this is the first column minus second column and that's the value which is the difference so if i want to see the difference what is the uh, where the difference is more whether it is in the intervention arm or it is in the control arm so cholesterol level is measured in the two groups before intervention and after intervention and if on, if i want to see the change in the mean cholesterol level in both these two group uh, the difference in control and intervention then my and then i may go for a independent sample t test so there are some underlying assumptions so first assumption is the there should be one independent there should be one dependent variable which should be measured on a continuous scale there should be one independent variable uh, again like we have seen that should have a two independent groups and uh, the third assumption is the independence of observation and this we have learned in the chi square test also that you you have to ensure that the two groups should be the two that's how the name is independent sample the two groups should be different so there should be independence of observation to ensure that there are two separate group and uh, if you have counted one individual in one group you will not count that individual in the other group or like let's say if you are comparing between male and female you will not take 10 uh, couples and you will keep all cup male uh, spouses in one group and the female spouses in the other group no you cannot do that because they are related to each other somehow so that's why your uh, individual should not be related to each other uh, in those two groups the other assumption is the dependent variable should be approximately normally distributed so we always use this term approximately normally distributed because this t test and the independent sample and paired sample is a it's considered a robust test so slight deviation from normality 
you can always go for these tests. There's not uh, always like man Whitney you and Milcoxon sign rank test is not always needed uh, because it it tolerates the slight deviation from the normality. And again, but uh, there should not be uh, too many significant outliers in the two groups of independent variable in terms of the dependent variable. And uh, th there's one more assumptions which, uh, which we talked in the beginning regarding the variance. So this assumption is very important. And this says that uh, there should be homogeneity of variance. Now, what do we understand by homogeneity of variance? So if you can recall that first or two, first two uh, slides, where I was talking, there were two individual in the first population A and population B. So from where I withdraw, if I withdraw the sample from those uh, two population, then the variance in that population should be same. So that is one assumption. So uh, we uh, this we have talked in the QQ test and uh, Shapiro Vilka have talked. And then uh, regarding this uh, normality testing, we have test that it is a robust test. Therefore, the data should be approximately normally distributed. And then uh, if we say, we say that if you increase the sample size, then even the uh, non-normal data can be tested using the t-test. Because the central limit theorem says that uh, if you take a large number of sample, then how to decide? So generally say if it is more than 50, uh, uh, then we can say that it, uh, you can up go for a independent sample t-test. There's one more concept regarding the uh, deviations. So if your data is, even, even if your data is uh, right or left skew, but if the direction of the skew is same, and still you want to apply the independent sample t-test, you can go with the independent sample t-test. If you see the literature, there are two schools of thought. Like one school of thought says that in case of a deviation, you should go for the man with me two, man with me you, which is the non-parametric counterpart. But again, larger uh, number of uh, references, they suggest that if your deviations are in the same direction, like both positive or negative skew, that we'll see how to define that, then you can go with this independent sample t-test. So in this example, you can see here, uh, this is a left, uh, this is a right skew. So skew basically we see with the direction of the tail. So since tail is going towards the right, we say it's a right skew. So both the data like male and female, it is the uh, in the same shape. But if you see this, uh, one is going towards the left and the other is going towards the right. So here the distribution is of different shape. So in case of the first scenario, you can still go ahead and apply independent sample t-test. But in case of a second, where there is a skew, but the skew is also both the groups are showing a, in the different direction, then you should not apply a independent sample t-test, then you should definitely go for the man with new test. So how do we test this homogeneity of variance in Jamovi? So basically, we test it by the test, which is known as the Levine's test for equality of variance. And this uh, says, uh, basically, the null hypothesis for this Levine's test for equality of variance says that uh, variance in the both population that is uh, basically, it's not same. So we want our null hypothesis to be rejected. That's why we want the p-value of this uh, Levine's test of equality of variance to be more than 0 0.05. Because if we reject the, uh, we want to accept our null hypothesis and we want to say that yes, variances in the uh, both the population from where we have withdrawn the sample, that should be equal. So based on this Levine's test of equality of variance statistics p-value, Jamovi gives two types of independent t statistics. If the uh, it meets the criteria of equal variance, that means if the p-value of Levine's test of equality of variance is more than 0 0.05. Remember, I said that we want our p-value to be more than 0 0.05 in this case. Why? Because then it will confirm that the homo there is a homogeneity of Variance. That means the two groups which we have withdrawn, the two from the two population, they have got equal variance. In that case, you can report the standard independent sample t statistics, degree of freedom, and p value. If uh, your uh, p value of Levine's test of equality of variance is 
uh, less than 0 0.05, that means it is unequal variance. In that case, you will go with the Welsh T statistics. Its degree of freedom and its P value. We'll see in the output. You will, it will be more clear to you once we see the output. So how do we do hypothesis testing? So basically here the null hypothesis states that the population mean of the two groups are equal, whereas the alternate hypothesis states that the population mean of the two group are not equal. So coming to the questions of independent sample t-test. So this is the question. So I have to check the distribution of following parameter. And that is the SpO2, cortisol, LDH, and ferritin. Because if I have to check the values of these four variables across the smoking status. So let's see SpO2, cortisol, LDH, and ferritin. But again, for the independent sample t-test, you have to test the, it's across the two group, not in general. So, uh, but let me first check it. So uh, I'll go with this demo V, SpO2, cortisol, LDH, and ferritin. So you can see here, this is the SpO2. This is the SpO2. This is the cortisol. Okay, no, I have to go with the, sorry, with this. Uh, in here, you can go to this t-test and you can go with this independent sample t-test. But this normality, basically, you should check. Uh, you can do with the descriptive also. But let's see, because it is in the same uh, uh, window. So you can test it here also. So if I have to see what was the question, it was SpO2, cortisol, LDH, and ferritin. So SpO2. Cortisol is here. First, I'll move this SpO2. Cortisol. And then ferritin. Third is the ferritin. And then LDH. So these four are there and I have to test the normality. So I'll go with this QQ plot. Why? Because the sample size is more than one, um, is more than 50. So you can see the QQ plot. And QQ, uh, it takes some time to... Uh, appear this QQ plot. So till the time we can learn about the other. And again, the grouping, since I have not entered. So grouping, I have to test it across the grouping variable. So grouping variable was the smoking status. So this I have moved here. So I have to test these value across the smoker as well as the non-smoker. You can see here like SpO2, it's, it is showing that it is a uh, normally distributed. This cortisol is normally distributed, definitely. This LDH is definitely not normally distributed because only a very few point is across this diagonal line. And then if you go down, this ferritin is also not normally distributed. So perfect distribution, if you see, is for cortisol, uh, not even for SpO2. But you can take SpO2 to some extent because there are many data points which are across the diagonal line. So I will move this cortisol, this LDH and ferritin back to this window because for this, I'll have to go for this independent sample t-test, not this man with new. Because in the same window, it gives you the option of man with new also. So coming to the assumption that I have test, now second assumptions I have to check with this homogeneity test. So I said that you have to see the p-value of this homogeneity test. So focus here, you can see the p-value of this homogeneity here. So in case of SpO2, it is less than uh, 0 0.05. And in case of SpO, this cortisol, it is more than 0 0.05. So in which case the homogeneity of variance uh, assumption is met? Yes, all of you, please type in the chat box. Okay, is it still delayed? Okay, data set, we have given the data set. Uh, yes. We can we drop the outline? There are many questions. Uh, yes, uh, you can drop the outliers that you can uh, uh, choose. Uh, and then again, you can, uh, there was one question regarding the base factor. Okay. So I will explain that also. Remember, we, we have to explain base factor. Base factor, I will explain once. Let me show this. So since you cannot type in the chat box, you can see here, 
that uh, this uh, p value in case of spo2 this homogeneity of variance of assumption is not met so i will uh, take this uh, welsh t statistics in case of first so how will i do that i will move this cortisol again back to this window because in case of a cortisol or what you can do you can duplicate this uh, analysis you can go to this all and you can uh, go to this duplicate option so that once you go up you can again see that so i'll move this back to this window and spo2 because spo2 you can see the p value is uh, this levine's test of equality of variance is not met so instead of student t test i will go with this welsh t statistics remember we talked that if with the homogeneity of variance is not met that means if the p value of levine's test of equality of variance which is the case in case of spo2 then i'll go with this welsh t statistics and then i will click on this mean difference the uh, significant this confidence interval of the mean difference the effect size then descriptive you can click on the descriptive plots also and then uh, these are the uh, output so what you can see here this is the welsh t statistics the value of welsh t statistics and this is the mean difference and the p value so you can say that the, there is was a difference of mean spo2 in smoker and non smoker and uh, if you see the statistics this descriptive you can see where it was more so if the person who was non smoker the mean was 95.16 and the person who were smoker the mean was 92.30 so mean spo2 was lower in a uh, smoker by how much that you can see here in the first one by the this mean difference 2.86 this was a mean difference between the two group this is a standard error of difference and now coming to the effect size so if you see the effect size the value of effect size here is 0.58 and they, they, that says that it is having a good effect size because we have learned that 0.1 0.3 and 0.5 that shows you the mild moderate and a good effect size so this 0.5 is having a good effect size now coming to the plot i have clicked the plot also you can again copy paste all this in your result section this is a descriptive plot where it is showing the mean and median with this this uh, circular dot it is a mean and this is a median and uh, here you can see uh this uh, then you can uh, again go uh, this this was still uh, for this spo2 coming to this uh, again there was another option and that was the uh, i i have to apply for this cortisol so i will move this cortisol here because cortisol was having a perfect normal distribution so with this cortisol i'll uncheck this welsh and i'll put the student because in case of a cortisol the normality was there and there was a homogeneity of variance so if you see the p value of this levine statistics this homogeneity of variance is there it is assumption is met so that's why i'll go with the student t test and if you see the value you can see the value of t statistics and the degree of freedom and p value so p value here it is not significant you can see the p value although the mean difference was there as 0.67 and if you see the value the descriptive table you can see here that it is 16 16.95 and 17.62 so there was a mean difference of 0.7 uh, 0.67 but it was not significant so if the significant if there is a no significance then you don't need to see the uh, this effect size because if your overall mean difference is not significant it doesn't make any sense to comment on the effect size so effect size comment should be made only if you have achieved the statistical significance if you have not achieved the statistical significance then we should not comment about the effect size so that's why I'm, i will not see this cohens d here because it is not so you may uh, like uh, you may do like first you see the p value and then you may choose to click on the effect size and this is the descriptive plot and this is the qq plot of this again how can you do that you can again go and uh, do all and you can copy it and you can open any ms word and you can paste it so this is one ms word document and if i paste all the result 
So uh, from MJ movie, all this got gets pasted and then you can write your interpretation here. You can write your interpretation here also because this is like a MS Word so, um, interface. So if you type something here, like the homogeneity of variance, so you can type here also in the Jamovi interface, you can see here. And then again, this uh, will also be copied into your MS Word. So depending on your comfort level, you may choose to type here in Jamovi output and then copy and paste it, or you can type it in the MS Word. So this was regarding the uh, independent sample t-test. And again, it's man with new. Remember that LDH and ferritin, they were not normally distributed. So now what I'll do, I'll move this LDH just for one example, I'll show with this LDH. And in, in, in LDH, instead of student t-test, I will click on this man with new. Uh, others options will be clicked as such. So man with new, you can see the value of man with new test statistics. It's p-value, p-value, it is not significant in case of LDH. If I move the uh, ferritin also, then you can see ferritin here. and. Uh, Okay, I have moved, I guess, P ferritin 2. Let me move ferritin 1. Okay, so this, because this was the LDH one, so I will move this ferritin 1. And then uh, you can see the man with me of this ferritin also. And uh, this is also P value is not significant. So if P value is not significant, I'll not go and see the uh, here. Here you can see it gives you the. Uh, Effect size on the basis of rank by serial correlation. Here, the coherence D will not be there because here you are seeing the median, you are comparing the median. So the effect size will be shown by the rank by serial correlation. But I said that since it is statistically not significant, you will not go for this uh, effect size. And then this, you can see the value of homogeneity of variance again. So in both the cases, the homogeneity of variance assumption, in this case, it is not applicable since you are going for the uh, this man with new. Here you are not going for the t-test. So uh, this you can uh, skip and then uh, come to this. This is the plot of both uh, LDH and the uh, ferritin. And then there's a descriptive table. So in this case, if you have to report the median, so here you can see, you can see the median uh, and mean both is here. So uh, you can go with this table and you can do the write-up. So if I have to show how to do the write-up, so this is the uh, interpretation, how to write the write-up. This was for the independent sample t-test. So this was one table like mean and standard deviation. And in one column, you have to give the T value, degree of freedom and P value mean and standard deviation of smoker, the mean SpO2 and for non-smoker. And then this is the description. Here it is 123 because, but you, it may be 180 because one sam, uh, so you have to write the sample size of cases of smoker and non-smoker, 123 and 57. And then you are writing that they were the mean SpO2 level across the levels of smokers and non-smokers were normally distributed as reported by the visual inspection of QQ plot. And there was no significant outlier. For outlier, again, remember, how did we check for the outlier? We went to the descriptives. And then uh, I have run an independent sample t-test. And again, you have to write regarding the homogeneity of variance also. So there was homogeneity of variance or no homogeneity of variance. As your p-value comes and as assessed by the Levine's uh, test of homogeneity. And then you have to compare, uh, give the value of mean and SD and then P value and T value. So the basic aim of showing this interpretation is you have to write the assumptions also regarding the normality testing, regarding the outliers, regarding the uh, this uh, homogeneity of variance. And there was one question, what to do with the outliers? So remember we talked like you can remove those outliers and you can perform reanalysis and see the values. If uh, your if initially also with uh, outlier. You have to see whether there is a whether those outliers are a genuine outlier or some data entry error. So if it is a data entry error, then you have to remove it. But if you are very much confident that that is a genuine outlier, then you may include that outlier and do the analysis. And again, you can redo the analysis after removing that outlier and see the difference. If you are finding that after removing the outlier, your results are coming significant, then you can report that uh, the same in your analysis that you have removed the outlier. 
Now coming to the base factor, you can see there is an option of base factor here. So basically uh, to test the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis for hypothesis testing, we have got two options. Either we can test by the p-value and the other option is by this base uh, factor. So this base factor is the likely, it is basically the ratio. So the likelihood of the alternate hypothesis or divided by in the denominator, you take null hypothesis. So if the value of base factor, let's say two, then we can say that the likelihood of alternate hypothesis will be two times more as compared to the null hypothesis. Similarly, if I say the base factor of four, then I will say the likelihood of alternate hypothesis will be four times more as compared to the null hypothesis. So in case if, uh, if I want my null hypothesis to be uh, rejected because p-value, whenever it will be less than 0 0.05, my uh, this thing will be rejected, null hypothesis. In that case, your uh, this base factor should always be more than one because then only you can say that, uh, you know, it is uh, your alternate hypothesis, the likelihood of your alternate hypothesis will, will be uh, that many times more than the null hypothesis. And in Jamovi, it sets a factor between 0.5 to 2. So you can only enter the values of 0.5 to 2 in this option. So this is the concept of base factor. So I, I think we have answered the uh, all the few, there were few questions in the chat box. Again, we'll answer a few more uh, once I have shown the uh, paired sample t-test. So this was regarding the independent sample t-test. Now, uh, man with me, I have shown you, this is the non-parametric counterpart of this uh, independent sample t-test. So if any variable, like in this case, you, you can see that if you want to compare the mean value of the outcome across two categories, like we have seen the ferritin and uh, LDH, then you can go with this uh, man with new test. So I'm skipping this because I have told you again, uh, it is used when the assumptions of T tests are not met and especially the normality one and normality also remember, even if it is skewed, but it is in the same direction, you can still go for the uh, this uh, independent sample T test. It is non-parametric in nature, this man with new, and it arranges the sample data in rank order. And then it compares the mean rank or the median of this variable across the dichotomous variable. Now, what is a rank order? Basically, rank order is like you, uh, you arrange uh, your values. The software arranges that values in ascending or descending order. So basically, it does in the ascending order. So rank one, will be given to the lowest and then rank two, three, four, the next second high, then third high and similarly. So basically it arranges all these values, it gives a rank to all those individual value and then it compares. So research question could be, uh, is the median, so instead of mean, we ask the median. So is median SGO2 level of population with alcoholic and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are the same? Or is the median post-operative pain as measured by the visual analog scale is similar for surgical technique one and surgical technique two? Or is the median APGAR score of babies born through the normal vaginal delivery and cesarean section is same or not? So in all these three research questions, what we have observed that there is a scale variable in each research question and we want to compare the median of this scale variable across two categories of a nominal variable. So the appropriate statistical test for such type is the Mann-Whitney U test or Mann-Whitney test. So I, I, there was a spelling error. It is Mann-Whitney. And then there are certain assumptions of this Mann-Whitney U test. So the dependent variable should be measured either on the ordinal or a continuous scale like pain score, like a scale measurement score like where we ask questions like highly agree, highly disagree and then your BMI, biochemical parameters, then independent variable should have only two categories like it is there with the independent sample t-test and there should be no relationship between the two groups within uh, with uh, the two groups should be independent that we have seen in the section of independent sample t-test. So that assumption should be there in this case also. You cannot go for a paired value in this case. And then 
the dependent variable should not be normally distributed. That's the important criteria because if it is not normally distributed, then only we can go for a man bitney u test. So till now, we have discussed one sample t-test, independent sample t-test, and the non-parametric part of the independent sample, which is the man bitney u test. And we have seen the non-parametric of uh, one sample also, which was the Wilcoxon test. So in this case, in case of a JAMO V1, beauty is that you don't need to remember the test. If you don't remember the non-parametric, because many times, uh, if we are not practicing, most of the time we don't remember the non-parametric name of the test. So no need to worry because once you open JAMOV, that non-parametric test name is there right in front of you. So you can click that. And that is not the case with SPSS or any other software because there you have to remember because there is another option of non-parametric and you go through that command. But in JAMOV, it is very simple. In the same uh, interface, you get that option. So this uh, null hypothesis is again, instead of mean, we write median. So the median of the two groups are equal. And in case we say that the median of the two groups are not equal. Now coming to the paired sample t-test. So paired sample t-test is basically, uh, we measure the uh, continuous variable x on the same individual for two time points. Let's say if we measure the systolic blood pressure, in summer and winter. So I have got a paired value. So you go by the name. It says paired t-test means single individual paired value. So I have measured one set of uh, people or one group of individual twice, maybe on two different time points. It may be under two different conditions. Like may I, I may measure the heart rate before and after. Dr. Pragyam, you are not audible. Your video has got stuck. Ma'am, it's joining. Wait for a while. It's Lakshmi, you have to go to each other. Lakshmi, you have to go to each other. No, but that is not working. Stop, admin, lagal, it's it. Okay, okay. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. You can continue. You're audible. Sorry for these small disturbances. So we were discussing regarding the paired value. You can see that uh, there can be many situations where we have got paired values of the same set of individual. And these are the situations like if you are measuring the blood pressure in summer and winter, that can be one situation. The second situation could be if you are measuring a heart rate, let's say before and after workout or even the systolic blood pressure. Again, you have got a paired values. 
then you can have two different places sides on the same individual right arm left arm right leg left leg etc or automatic bp machine versus manual bp machine so there are two different instruments but in all these four scenarios what have we seen that it is the same blood pressure and we have got the paired value of the same person in all these four scenarios so the what type of study design we can use so one the participants either they can be individual tested at two different time points or it can be a participants who are tested under two different conditions on the same dependent variable so again the same example five people where i have measured their mean intake of calorie and then after six weeks modification program i have again i am measuring the mean intake of calorie and if i want to see what is the difference in between these two values i'll go for a pair t test this is again the same health drink one and health uh, they have now ran on a, uh, this uh, kilometer one kilometer and uh, again i want to see so this is for the example of two intervention so for one uh, the same group i have given health drink one and after maybe few uh, weeks i have given health drink two and i want to see their how much kilometer they run on the treadmill and if i want to see the difference in between these two value i'll go for a paired t test and this is again the same uh, two body parts of the same individual like you are applying uh, there are four kids and you are applying some ointment on right arm and left arm and after one week if you want to see what is the a uh, clearing by measuring the dimension clearing of maybe if it is a eczema and then if you see the difference in that uh, diameter then it is again a pair t test so the research question is you want to know whether there is any change in the scores in the paired observation uh, like there was a mean difference in bmi value before and after a six weeks exercise program uh, again the comparison of pain score measured on vas before and after surgery and any difference in the marks obtained in pre university and university examination of mbbs students so in all these uh, example we have seen that there is a continuous or a scale variable and we want to compare it before and after so the appropriate statistical test is the pair t test and this type of study design is also known as the pre post study so let's see so uh, the first assumption is dependent variable which is measured in continuous actually there are some issues here with the network probably that's why i am getting disconnected so underlying assumption is uh, there should be one dependent variable which should be measured on continuous scale the second assumption is uh, it should be a paired value so remember in independent sample t test we emphasized that you if you want to do the study on uh, two separate gender you should not take husband and wife but here you if you are taking like husband and wife where, where there are related group then also you can go for this uh, paired uh, t test so uh, it should be it can be a related group it can be a two a same set of individual measured twice on some particular variable and regarding the outlier and the normality that is also important because there should be no significant outlier in the difference between the two related group and it should be normally distributed so the null hypothesis states that the population mean difference between the paired value is equal to 0 whereas the alternate hypothesis states that the paired value is not equal to 0 the non parametric counterpart is known as the wilcoxon sign rank test and we will see how to perform these tests over jamovi this was again the part so if i go 
in the next question and these uh, you can just download these write up also from the uh, website that is the meritindia.org and this is the paired sample t test so i have to check the mean value of this uh, this uh, this i'm skipping because i have to test the normality this i'll see so i have to see the mean spo2 at baseline and at the time of outcome this is the data set i'll show with this one example so i'll go with here in the t test and select this paired sample t test in paired sample t test i have to select this spo2 so it moves in pair so i have to move first in spo2 and then i have to see spo2 2 so i'll go down and select with spo2 2 so this will be your paired value spo2 1 and spo2 2 and then here you have to click the meet first if you before you click the uh, see the wilcox and rank you have to check the normality so normality you can see it gives you the normality testing of difference so it is approximately normally distributed because the most of the data points are across this diagonal line so i'll go with the student test and i don't need to click on this wilcox and rank i'll see this mean rank effect size descriptive and descriptive plot and then you can see here that uh, this is the difference difference is the minus 0.89 and the p value is significant so since the p value is significant i'll go and see the cohen's d so effect size is very small because it is 0.1 c 16 so 0.1 effect size is very small you can comment on that and you can see the 95% confidence interval also of of this uh, effect size so it is if lower is 0 0.31 and the upper is 0 0.01 because it is negative that's why it's in the reverse and coming to the your uh, descriptive statistics it is the mean and standard deviation of spo2 at baseline and at the time of discharge with the standard error this copy this table you can copy this is the plot and then this is the normality plot so you can copy these two plots also and the table and write the description and description again when you write the description you have to write the assumptions also so here you can see that uh, uh, it is uh, this normality was tested by the visual inspection of qq plot there was no outlier in the visual inspection of box plot and there was a significant increment in the spo2 after intervention and the mean difference was this which was statistically significant so uh, if i have to give you one uh, message then uh, the only thing is you perform the analysis all of you i know that you perform the analysis but uh, you don't write those assumptions in your interpretation so do write those assumptions because at least you can write uh, that shows that you are going systematically and that will prevent you from committing any error while you are interpreting or performing the statistical analysis and in case uh, of wilcoxon uh, let's see with the one example how to perform wilcoxon so uh, that they probably uh, i can see another question uh, to show that and that is basically if i see here variable probably it will be ldh or ferritin so maybe crp let's see the crp so i may go uh, here and let's move these variable back to their original window and then i may uh, do this creatinine so creatinine 1 and creatinine 2 so this is creatinine 1 and this is creatinine 2 and then if you see the value and the plot so you can see here creatinine is again not normally distributed this is like this so in this case i'll go for a wilcoxon rank test i'll click that wilcoxon rank and i'll see the value so this is the wilcoxon statistics and the mean difference the other thing will be the same but the only thing is the wilcox wilcoxon statistics and p value and again here you have to emphasize on the median more as you are comparing the median so this you can describe in your data set so that's how you go uh, with this uh, either for the uh, with wilcoxon rank or with the student uh, e test depending on the normality distribution and outlier i have said that you have to go with this descriptive click on this descriptive and enter the variable here and then you can click on this box plot you can see there is option of box plot here and again copy paste that in your result or maybe you can just write the description so uh, 
yes sir uh, what is yes so uh, dr ritu padna uh, and all other participant that is the next session uh, regarding the three group where we'll see the anova the repeated measure anova if there are more than two group next month second tuesday uh, we'll have the session on comparison of more than two uh, means uh, again question slow down okay actually it was for 90 minutes that's why i maybe i was rushing i'm sorry uh, for the speed so uh, should i show the responses uh, commands once again link for jamovi software is it available free yes it is available free of cost and i will just demonstrate it it is very simple you can just go to the google and uh, type let's see i am sure. so you can type jamovi here enter and this here is for the jamovi download and you can go with the jamovi desktop or you go with basically this jamovi desktop and then you download this solid version you can download this current also but it's better that if you are a beginner you start with the solid version this is for the desktop and for the desktop also there is a window version and there is a mac version also so depending on your system requirement you can either download the mac or window that is regarding the jamovi uh any other base factor yes i have explained base factor uh, dr dampala base factor is basically let me show you so here is the base factor base factor is basically it's the likelihood of alternate hypothesis versus the null hypothesis so in numerator we take the alternate hypothesis and in denominator we take the null hypothesis so that we see basically as a uh, in the base uh, the base factor okay so that uh, contact details are there in the chat box uh, in in our uh, website also uh in these slides also it is the www.meritindia.org at the rate gmail.com and again you can write us at support uh meritindia at the rate gmail.com and i think uh likert scale yes for likert scale you have to see the distribution but uh, mostly likert scale that since it has got a score of 1 2 3 4 5 it follows a non normal distribution so then you have to go with this man with me and uh, any other question like ritu padna is typing the scores like at scale can we do man with me yes uh, any other question how to assess the software that i have answered uh, okay i think there are not more questions relevant okay. everything has been answered okay and sorry because in the last i was a little i was rushing because i thought maybe time will be less so you can see the recordings probably if you don't understand or i'll explain the commands once again let me show that these are the t tests so basically in there is a independent sample there is a paired and there is a one sample so for independent sample i'll summarize once again uh, this you can see that uh, here let's see any example maybe if i want to compare the systolic blood pressure across the smoker two categories of smoker versus non smoker gender or let's say gender male female that we have shown as a example also gender and then uh, you can see here i will go for first i'll do the assumption check so i'll go for this uh, normality this qq plot because normality is shapiroville so since i have checked and it is saying assumptions that homogeneity of variance is not met because it is 0.0 less than 0.001 so instead of this student i will go with this welsh t test and then uh, you can see the values this mean difference this confidence interval and this effect size we have discussed the effect size descriptive and descriptive plots keep on clicking all these options and keep on interpreting it and then you can see that mean difference and since it is not significant i will not go with this uh, value of this effect size because this is important only if it is significant but it is 0.766 so it is not significant 
So I'll write that. And in case of a paired, again, you have to go to this here. Paired sample, move those two paired values. The base factor we have discussed. And the mean difference, descriptive, descriptive plot, effect size we have discussed. And these assumptions check also. So do write those assumptions check in your interpretation. Otherwise, once you do it once or twice, it is very simple. The interface of Janobi is too, too simple for anyone who is a beginner. And uh, it is a user-friendly. So we do recommend all those Nave and Novice researchers who are doing their thesis work or any project, small project for the first time, you may go uh, for the Janobi as a good option. And it is free also. So there's no problem. Like you don't have to use a pirated software or... Uh, you know, ask from someone uh, regarding the analysis. You can very well do it. So I think we can end the session here if, if we have answered all the questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt you once again. Um, I can see from the delegates, they have, there are three hands, hands raising. So can I promote them to panelists? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so what are the questions you can unmute? How will they ask? Unmute and... Uh, so I would uh, ask the delegates to kindly unmute yourself yeah, and yeah. ask the question directly to ma'am. Dr. Busan has, is it also raising, I don't know. Any any question? If you don't want to unmute and ask, you can type in the chat box. Or or while answering the other questions, if your question has also been answered, then the same. I'm stuck. Okay, that was okay. Sahu has raised. So uh, yes, how to how to will you be moving all these people to attendees? I don't know because no one is talking. You can unmute and, and answer, uh, like ask. I can see Pawan Deep, Akanksha, Rishabh, they are also raising their hand. Patel, Dr. Patel, Divya. Yes, how, what is the mechanism? How uh, will they ask? Ma'am, uh, after I make them and promote as panelists, they can unmute themselves and uh, carry on with their question. They are by mistake. I think, are they doing by mistake? Because none of them I are think, ma'am, so, yes, ma'am. Because they are not I talking, think... actually. I'm yes, waiting for the questions, but I cannot so see. So, I, I would request all the delegates to, if you have do not have any questions, then please lower your hands. It's a kind request to all the delegates. So please lower your hands if you don't have any questions to be placed to ma'am. Otherwise, you will be moved to panelist and then you need to talk. Okay. Then we may conclude today's session and we'll... Yes, ma'am. So I would request you to conclude by saying few words. So am I supposed to say? I, I'm supposed to say. Okay, Dr. Shamshad is supposed to say. Okay, sir, please carry on then. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the team Clarnet, uh, Venkatesh, Duparna, Prachi. Uh, we are associated from last one and I think one and a half year. And till uh, uh, this month uh, and next month also, we have a session on uh, one way ANOVA and you uh, measure ANOVA. Uh, regarding data set and ppt uh, you may visit uh, recordings you may visit our youtube channel and uh, you may visit our website mateindia.org you will get all access of all the data sets ppt and uh, recordings will be shared soon and for any query you the participant may write us at support at the rate of meritindia.org and show the slide huh. and uh, and we will definitely respond 
and we would like to uh, we are thankful to all our participants uh, near about 350 participants has been joined uh, this session and uh, next session also is a continuation of this session because in this session we have uh, compared two means and then next session we will learn how to compare three and more than three means so we would like to invite uh, our participant to join again venkatesh hello hello thanks hello uh, over to Vekatesh. I think he... there is some problem. I think uh, uh, Dr. Oh. Vekatesh is having some network issues. No bandwidth. Hello. Yeah, hello, Dr. Dheeraj. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, uh, I am also uh, downloading this package. But I didn't get the all these modules in uh, in that pa okay. package. So okay. how we can extend uh, so, our so, package so. into the different modes? Uh, okay, by that I'm we sorry. can get the maximum uh, statistical test. Where uh, here is the t test and no regression. But whichever I am downloading now, that that didn't get the all these options in this uh, in one. Yes, a good question. I think I forgot. Maybe with the earlier two webinar we have covered that. But I'll tell you. Can you see a plus sign here on ah, my? Yes. Yes, madam. Click that plus sign. You can see there is Jamovi library. You click that Jamovi library, and there you can see there is a installed available. Okay. And then you can type. If you don't do, like if I want to do a, let's say survival analysis. So I will type survival. And then it will show you the death watch survival module. Okay. You know, there are three different, and then you can like we have uh, downloaded this J survival. So you can mm -hmm. click that. And that will be installed. Like if you want to go for a structured equation modeling, SEM. So you, you may write SEM, okay, and okay. then you can okay. get that. Uh, is it meta analysis package is available yes, in this yes, manner? Yes, major, yes. major, major. It is there. Yeah, major, I, huh, major. If you okay. don't know the name of the package, just write meta analysis. Like I have, okay. I, so you can see this major, and this is a very good uh, option here in the Jamovi meta analysis. Yes, very easy and very good graphs come, so you can try that. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. And you can just click on this. Uh, since I have installed it, so here my this thing is showing update. But in your case, it will be sh be showing like install, like you can see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other question from any other participant? Okay. So Venkatesh is asking uh, Ritu Parna to conclude since he is uh, having some network issue. Hello, madam. Okay. Uh, yes, Hello. Doctor, yes, Dr. Su Sucharitra. Yeah, it's a, a very nice uh, session. Thank you so much. I could understand everything. Uh, I have a little bit of knowledge regarding that, but then I could extend uh, my knowledge regarding this. Thank you so much, Dr. It is very easy. I, I encourage all of you to please try it. And all your anxieties related to statistics, that will be definitely go, uh, it will go down. If you start using this software. So if uh, there are no other questions, then I okay, think ma'am. We'll okay, ma'am. So just kindly allow me to conclude by saying a few words. So thank you. Thank you, dear doctors, for sharing such valuable insights. And uh, I also thank uh, the team for extending us the opportunity to host the session. And I hope you had a seamless experience. So with all you due permissions, everyone, I'm closing the session for today. And looking forward to hosting you again very soon. Till then, stay safe and healthy, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.